Can you explain a little more? I mean, Jobs Ohio being a nonprofit entity, can you explain a little more why you believe the Inspector General will have some would have some authority to to look into the activities of the employees there or the board? Sure. So you know the revised code is fairly clear uh, when it comes to who the Inspector General has jurisdiction over. Uh, and it literally defines state employee in 121.41e, and it's defined as any person who's an employee of a state agency or any person who does business with the state, and then goes on to reference job, including Jobs Ohio. And so, I mean, it specifically defines within the section that governs the Inspector General's duties and the Inspector General's ability to move forward with an investigation. Uh, state employee, and it includes a reference to Jobs Ohio. So, let's keep in mind that even though Jobs Ohio is a public-private entity, it was created as a creature of, of the state, of the government of the state. And as citizens, we expect there to be checks and balances on every entity of the state. But there have been many roadblocks set up eliminating and hiding the checks and balances that ought to be in, in place for this agency. And that's very, very troubling. So we're, we're, I'm pleased to be joining Representative Carney in asking the IG to launch this investigation. You know, the IG in many other instances has the ability to launch an investigation of his own authority, on his own court. But uh, the law that created Jobs Ohio requires a complaint to be filed. filed. So we have to file it. Uh, a couple of things. One, I want you to elaborate on what the representative was saying about this is kind of the last uh, tool that you guys have to do this. So if, if this if doesn't work, do you guys, is that it? Do you guys have no other power or entity you can turn to to get? You know, I, I think, you know, certainly the legislature could take action if it wanted to to reopen Jobs Ohio. I mean, we've, we've seen them act to close Jobs Ohio, so obviously the, the legislature could take action to say, you know, there, there's so much controversy around this entity, we need to actually make sure that it's transparent. I think arguably a court case could be brought to demonstrate that in fact constitutional authority of the auditor's office provides for oversight of all these state dollars. I mean, if you read uh, the obligations of the auditor's office, it's obviously a creature of the Constitution. And I think, given the fact that but for revenue from a state source, Jobs Ohio doesn't exist, uh, my sense is the auditor of state could bring a claim to say, look, I'm, I was created by the Constitution, the Constitution's superior to the Ohio Revised Code, and so in fact, this office has the authority to audit the books of Jobs Ohio vis-a-vis uh, -vis the constitutional authority of the office. And so, uh, granted, I think you know, this is a, a very substantial step to ask the Inspector General to, in fact, investigate. Uh, I think that there are potential other avenues. I don't think this is, is the only avenue, but I do think that this is obviously a very significant step to ask the Inspector General to get involved. Well, keep in mind that some of the court actions have been stymied due to lack of standing that was written into the statute. So uh, we do have three branches of government here, and they all, all work to check on each other. I do understand the concerns you're expressing, but why do we continue to refer to the tax credit authority as Jobs Ohio? That is part of ESA, ESA state agency. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, certainly we, we can have a conversation about uh, who is actually in control of making these decisions. Obviously, the governor on one hand wants to say, this is my job creation entity, Jobs Ohio, and I'm responsible for what's happening over there with respect to the creation of jobs. Oh, wait a second, I have no authority whatsoever with respect to how tax credits are being handed out, even though you know one is allegedly in development services and the other is in Jobs Ohio. And so, again, I, I think for those of us on the outside looking in, it seems like the curtains have been drawn by the governor. And when it's in his best interest, uh, or at least he believes it's in his best interest to say, I'm making these decisions, he's very quick to say, oh, this is as a result of what I've done here. And then on the other hand, he's out there publicly saying, 
I have no ability to determine who's getting these credits, when they're getting them, et cetera. So, you know, you can't have it both ways. Um, but I think for those of us on the outside, they make reference to the people who are making these decisions. I think there's real questions about who in fact is, in, who in fact is making these decisions. I had a related question, it's not directly about this. 